Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It is Thursday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. The year's 2019. Let's talk trading. How to trade like a pro, selecting like a pro. What do I mean by selecting like a pro? One thing that pro traders do is they select the best trades out of the bunch. It's like when you go to the uh, grocery store or farmer's market, you pick the best fruit, you pick the best vegetables. You don't, and, and you take your time. You don't just rush in and, and, and just grab a few and move on. And you see, that's what a lot of amateur traders do. They're just looking for that action, looking for that trade. You know, I compare trading to hunting and fishing at times. You know, fishermen know when is the best time to trade and where in the lake or river or ocean is the best place to find the fish. They know how to select these areas. A hunter, they know how to select where to hunt, where the animals will graze or where they'll water, where they will, where they will bed down. And then if there's a herd, they select the biggest one, the one that they can pick off, the best shot. They don't just go out there and just shoot the first thing they see. Some might, but professionals, no. So basically the message is, is to take your time and select the best trades out of the bunch. And part of that is selecting the best money and risk management. It would be crazy to risk half your... Uh, portfolio on one trade or, or your entire portfolio on one trade, you're just asking to get blown out. I mean, it's just that simple, right? Now, the gap fill. See, once again, they all filled. So that's a pretty good trade. You might want to select that trade first day of the week, or you maybe wait to the second day of the week and see if there's any opportunities left over for you to get a gap fill trade. You know, a weekly wick zone trade. You can see here, it entered the wick both times and exited the wick on either side. Great trade. Um, I've been showing you the yearly open. And you can see here, you know, drop down there on the yearly open. And prices on a daily basis only closed above it, what, maybe three days? And you see here, it tested, failed to close. The short would have paid off. And then we've been looking at taking the first day of the week and exploiting when price tries to exit that um, opening range. And then we do the same thing for the month, the first day of the month exploiting when price tries to break out and then we're also doing it for the first day of the year even though that first day of the year really was a whopper and so uh it's going to take a while before we can exploit that even though we did have a chance there earlier in the month but price came right back down And then we're looking at just the opens. Uh, somebody asked me what was the best trade out of all these trades, what trade should they do? And I'm really torn because you, you can trade the opens where you're trading away from the open. And I told them daily, weekly, monthly. Because the price has to range, it's gonna range away from the open. And on the other hand, the wick zones. I mean, we see the statistics on the wick zone. I mean, we know if price gets in the wick zone, there's 70% chance or better, based on statistics, that price is going to leave that wick zone. We see it every day. So what you have to decide is, you select your trade. Well, 
how do you select a trade? Do you see where price is and then look at what methods you could use or do you pick a method and then see where price is and sit back and wait? I mean, think about it. it it's, it's, a, it's a question that you need to answer as a trader. You open up your chart and do you decide what to trade based on where price is? Or do you just have a method that you're going to apply day after day? See, one of the things I do, another way of selecting like the pro is, is I run those statistics. So I know what methods work best with what pairs. And I learned that back from my stock trading days. I mean, some stocks were just great buy zone stocks. Other stocks were what is something I called run forest run stocks. And there's a few others, but the point is, is that you have to look at the, what you're trading and then you look at the method and you, you make, basically you find what method works best with what's, with what instrument you're trading. Okay. Or what instrument works best with what method you're trading. So for me, what I do is I look at where price is and I then trade based, tr you know, select a method based on where price is. I mean, if price isn't in the rat zone, but it could be in the buy zone, it, why would I want to look at the rat zone? I mean, it, that wouldn't make sense now, would it? But you don't have to do it my way. E you know, each way has pros and cons. Once again, we're within the range of the first day of the month, first day of the year. And you can see here, we're, we're back in that inside bar. That occurred 13 days ago. But you see here, we had a, there was a nice movement outside the inside bar of the day and the week. So there was opportunity once again. So, you know, remember I have the what I call the price GPS. I know where price is relative to the open. It's 17 pips below. It's 64 pips off the high and six pips off the low. So just having these three pieces of information, I know there's no buy zone trade, possible rat zone and wick zone trade. Okay, let's look at these ranges. Once again, the Euro Yen is only 70 pips, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pairs that have ranged 100 pips or more with the new beast clocking in at 222, 222 pips. And you can see here, there was basically no wick zone on the lower side of yesterday and price just fell right through that low. It made it up to 125.44, couldn't hold that and it wound up coming right back down. And so right now we're in a daily h1 lowest open situation larry live trade long trigger is 82. let me see what happens to that and we're in the rat zone so now you've got a lowest open trade and you've got a rat zone trade and it's possible let's see no it doesn't look like you have a wick zone trade on the daily Okay, pivot point was just a few pips. Oh, well, this was a missed pivot that got filled, it looks like, from yesterday. It hit the pivot point. The pivot point was above the buy zone by 10 pips. So there was a really nice trade. You have the open. And you see it took out a missed pivot, turned right around, and took out the pivot. So once again, I was discussing it with a trader who's asking me about what method to select. I said, 
you know, you can use the pivot point bias. I mean, we have seen day after day how those pivots get taken out. Once again, we are in that lower rat zone, looking for a green rat reversal coming out of there. And showed you we took out the pivots right back to the weekly pivot. You see, it hit weekly R1 and they brought price right back to the weekly pivot. For those of you who like trading the pivots. And you can see here, we took out all those missed pivots. We still have a couple from this year down here, and there's still a couple from uh, last year up here. So <clears throat> this week, we cleaned up those missed pivots. Okay, selecting a trade. I mean, if you're just looking to trade, you can come to this screen. Look at the balls on the three levels easy semaphore indicator and basically just trade at the lines. In fact, one trader said something about he put his trade on, I think at some, you know, at a 25 level and put his TP at 50 and put his stop loss at 00, zero and he made 25 pips. He goes, "Can it be that easy?" It's like, well, it's a simple trade and ease comes with practice. So yeah, it can be that easy. Why does it have to be difficult? I mean, if you believe all the nonsense that, you know, they're teaching out there that, oh, you got to know the market and you got to know this and you got to know that. And you got to have a bunch of squiggly line indicators on your chart. I mean, if that's what you want to believe, fine. Or you can believe simple price action. You know, price is going to make a high it's going to, or it's going to make a low. And then sooner or later, it's going to reverse off that level. It could push to new highs and new lows, but then price will usually reverse off of that level. I mean, you know, when you break things down, they're usually simple. You know, complex things usually are made up of simple parts put together in such a way that it seems complex, right? And so here we have, you know, into the wick zone and out. And you can see my favorite trade here. We had a long trigger here, another long trigger. But I usually say if you got a bunch of lines on the chart, like let's just go back here. Uh, where is it? There we go. Got a bunch of lines on the chart, right? You got the three ball. Where are you going to take your first trade? Best one would, would be either be here, but it wasn't green at the line. But see, if you wait it, you had a green at the line. And actually, it closed here. So green at the line would be here. You could take a chance here and just have a tight stop there. Of course, adjust your position size accordingly, and you'd be profitable. You can see here what's going on at the tick level. Einstein line, you can see here, it's consolidating, not much range. So when you see this start to happen, you you take a pip. What's wrong with taking a one pip profit? You know, somebody goes, yeah, but if you take a one pip and then you have a 10 pip loss, I go, well, why'd you have a 10 pip loss? I mean, some people say, you know what, if you enter a trade and within the first three or five minutes it's not moving your way, exit. Because if price isn't going your way, chances are it's going against you. You know, just some common sense things. You decide how long to wait. You decide what you're willing to lose. Whoops. Okay, fellow traders, that's pretty much it for the day. Once again, selecting your trades, your methods like a pro. It's not that difficult, okay? It's pretty simple. So I hope that helps. And just remember when you're trading, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So I'd like for you to all go out there, have a great Valentine's Day. And if you're trading, drain the banks like a pro.